Hello and welcome back to the channel, it's me Mark and today we're going to be having a look at some of the pre-manufactured fittings you can get for steel containment, this time again the 75mm trunking that I demonstrated making a bend on on one of the last videos. You'll see there are a few different types here, um, this is a 90 degree bend but it's in 245 so you get a slightly smoother bending radius, if that's a factor with your cables. You can also get these sharper bends still like the one we formed in the trunking ourselves. So they're an option and then there's other fittings such as the T's, um, you can get reducers, um, you can also get uh, flange couplers, there's loads of different fittings if you go off and check on one of the wholesaler websites or magazines you'll see all of them in there. But we're going to show how we put them together in this little demonstration, get some of it on the wall behind me again and then fit some of the distribution boards alongside it building up this booth and I'll explain that as we go along. Essentially these are supposed to save time on site because they take less time to put together and also um, reduce cost because obviously you're not paying for that time out on site installing them. I still think that that equation doesn't play out in all sizes of containment. Smaller sizes, definitely the effort it takes to manufacture a bend, you're not saving that much in terms of the material cost um, and the time it takes in relation to that just doesn't play out. But when you go to some of the larger sizes of trunking, and the expense of the fittings gets higher, that time equation isn't quite as vast as you might think. And we've done a few experiments ourselves to show that you know it works out pretty much the same whether you make them or not. But as I mentioned on that last video, usually contracts will stipulate that you need to be using these pre-manufactured fittings. You can see here, they simply just clip together, so it's really straightforward. Um, this one is the end of the trunking with the pre-drilled holes. Obviously, if you're coming to fit it onto the opposite end, if I show that here, which doesn't have them, you'll have to mark and measure those holes, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Um, but basically, pop your trunking on, get your screws, and screw it together. It is as simple and as easy as that, um, and that's going to form the first little bend we need in this set of containment we're going to make to go around this distribution board. So I'll just screw this together could use the impact which is just next to me here but we'll do it by hand. Sometimes you can bust the threads on these, they are just kind of a very thin material with a, a thread cast into it so if you go too mad trying to rush you'll find you burn it out and then you've got nothing to get your fixing in. Okay so if you see that there we've got our 90 on there with the bending radius that's a little bit kinder for us and that can help us form the next bit of containment on the wall. Now at the other end when we come to cut this off because we're going to, um, this is going to be a vertical leg down the side of the distribution board, we're going to have to make a cut at the bottom so we can put our um, fitting on to then swoop underneath but we'll get to that in just a sec. Okay, so you can see I've mounted the pods behind me now. I have um, got the three-phase one over here to my left and this single-phase one over to my right. Just adjusted the heights a bit so it made a bit of sense for people approaching them to work on. Not necessarily um, how I would do it out on site with this big space between the two boards, but again, just thinking about people accessing the booth to do a bit of work. I've taken a couple of knockouts out at the top of this one already. I don't want to pepper them all with holes from the start because the idea is people are going to come and work on these and make their own mark. But I do need to get them set up with the containment at the very least. So I'm just doing that. I'm going to pop a couple of holes in this top land plate as well. So I've, I've positioned the trunking up on top of here and just marked through for these two holes in the position it needs to be. There at that end, that's really easy. This other one where the gland plate is, I've marked the outer edges. And I've just come in a similar distance from each edge and been careful to try and position the, the holes on the trunking where it matches up with a sensible position on top of the distribution board because this one is significantly deeper than this one. So just trying to match it all up and make sure you don't just score a line straight across and then start drilling your holes because you may find they kind of overhang the um, board. So just to bear that one in mind, I'm going to use the uh, Armeg cutters and just to give a quick demonstration of those, I've just sprayed this with a bit of the um, cooling spray. So the compound, cutting compound, if I can get my words out. Um, and yeah, I'm going to drop these holes in now and then we'll pop it up on the wall and see how it all looks when it comes together.
Okay, moment of truth. Does it actually fit on the top of the DBs? Oh, that's a good sign. We've gone down there quite nicely. And we've gone down there quite nicely. So you can see we've got that in now. Is All I need to do is pop a couple of lock nuts in the top, secure the trunk in along the back wall, and then we've got that aspect done. Coming down this side, I'm not exactly sure how long we need to be because I'm going to use some of the Schneider power tags and there's a little expansion board coming for that and I'm not sure the depth. So for the minute, <coughs> I can just pop this on to the edge there and then we'll adjust that as we need to um, once we know what's what. But yeah, I can pop that on now and at least it's done. Uh, I assume whip it off and make the changes as and when they're needed. You, usually you want to get all your containment done and the reason being you can't get access to your screws very easily to then dismantle it to go and put other bends on and mess about um, but because of the nature of what I'm trying to do here it's unavoidable I want to crack on so I'm going to get all this mounted and I'll just take the the trunk in as far as I can I could go off measurements from the old internet and just put some bends in but you know what it's like, it'll come and it'll be slightly a different size and then you're left with all your containment cut wrong. So I'll just pop this together and then we'll have a look at these boards. I've just popped some of these into the trunk in as well. They're just to really hold the cables in. So if you're running cable along your trunk in, it sometimes can all flop out as you're trying to get it from A to B. So if you pop these in, it stops that from happening. It also gives you somewhere to fix the lid onto. So double handy, makes it a bit more rigid as well. And they just twist in. So really straightforward to fit. You can see I've got the little screws in the back there with some screw caps on. Just because this is timber, I've used countersunk um, wood screws because that's what I had on the shelf and I've just popped some screw caps on just to make it a little bit neater. So you've got the single phase board on, it's got the um, couplers through, same in here as well. So we can bring our circuits down. There's going to be more holes put into this. This trunking will be on and off the wall all the time, I'm sure. So I'm just trying to get this set up in a way that might make sense to someone coming in to, to work with it. Like I said, we've got a power tag board going in, so there's going to be a little expansion board. We're going to put a metering kit in this Schneider Actin Iron P board here. And again, you can see that's the one with the um, neutral that clips on, so no fly leads. Both of these boards, I want to try and use the most modern equipment possible and also give experience to people of some of the older gear that's out there so they know how to maintain it. But I thought starting up the booze, we might as well get the right stuff in here. Um, this is top of the range Schneider stuff and um, yeah we're going to kit it all out really sweet and nice in here. I'm going to pop some conduit in in another video so we're going to drop some conduit down to some socket outlets, um, a few light switches and whatnot to go in so we're going to use some steel conduit, we'll do some sets, some bends and we'll show you how you join into your socket outlets as well. Then we'll maybe put a bit of plastic containment up, maybe some tray because obviously we need to bring steel wire armour cables into here so we'll show some sets in tray as well and just build this booth up into the best we can in the space we've got and I hope you're all enjoying it um, it's a good bit of fun for me actually just to mess about in here it's freezing out in the unit today the office is really warm so I've had to pry myself out of there I feel pretty ill as well but um, yeah I've enjoyed myself I hope you've enjoyed watching me have a go at this like I say when you're using the pre-made containment really straightforward so these just clip in all your end pieces, they just screw on as long as you get your measurements right for opening up your holes and they are quite forgiving. So if you do it wrong, you can open them up a little bit wider and you get a bit of wiggle room. So there's no great dramas with it. If you want, you can measure them. So if you want, you can measure them, use your set square and then you know you're going to get them um, bang on every time. But sometimes it's just as easy to hold them on a mark as long as you make sure you hold them the right way around. Um, yeah, that is what it is. Um, we'll jump back on with another video looking at the metering kit on this Schneider board and we'll start pulling some wiring in as well. So we'll just take this one step at a time slowly but surely and we'll get there in the end. Thank you all for watching and I will see you on the next one.